Eugene Medford was not a happy man. In fact, he was furious and could barely contain his anger. He paced furiously around the room, rereading the private investigator's report he had just received. Luckily, his two teenage daughters were not home that Thursday evening. His wife, his only source of joy, was presumably at her usual bachelorette party. But because the report he was reading confirmed what he had long suspected, Ashland was actually at the Starlight Modal with her shitty lover, Donald Gresham. Various plans for revenge raced through his mind as he drank his fourth glass of scotch. He was feeling the effects, but he wasn't drunk yet, at least not so drunk that he couldn't kill both of those idiots with his bare hands. Emotions got the better of him, and he threw his glass into the fireplace, the glass shattering into a thousand pieces. It sounded like a gunshot. Bastards! There was a knock on the door. It was actually a loud knock. Police, open up! Eugene was already angry enough that he needed someone to take his anger out on, and the police would be a good target. Some traffic cop gave him a ticket this evening right around the corner from his house. He claimed that Eugene failed to stop completely. This is just what I need. He walked up, opened the front door, and was ready to tell these cops everything that was on his mind when he realized that he was looking at three guns pointed straight at his heart. What the hell does that mean? Oh, damn. The next thing Eugene knew, he was lying on the floor. Let me get up, you bastards. I did not do anything. When the dust settled, he sat on the couch, rubbing his sore wrists. But the officers apologized for their actions because they thought they heard a gunshot. There were two people there in uniform and Detective Sergeant Mitchell Springfield in his wrinkled old polyester suit, which he apparently bought at the three-day suit store. Mr. Medford, do you know Donald Gresham? Yes, he is a piece of shit who has sex with my wife. Detective Springfield was surprised that Medford admitted to knowing Gresham. Well, Mr. Gresham was killed about an hour ago as he was leaving a motel room with your wife. It's a pity, but I thought that only the good die young. Whoever did this killed my wife too. Please tell me the answer is yes. Eugene smiled at the detective. This is no laughing matter, Mr. Medford. You are the main suspect in his murder. Where were you an hour ago? One of your idiot traffic cops wrote me a ticket on the street. Now get out of my house. Look, Mr. Medford, we're just doing our jobs. Of course, you understand that when a wife's lover is killed, the husband certainly becomes a suspect. Okay, but isn't that true for all the husbands whose wives this bastard had sex with? Well, yes. I'm sure you're right, answered the amazed Detective Springfield. Well, Detective Mitchell Springfield, your wife Victoria, living at 123 Ashland Avenue. You must be a suspect because Gresham also had sex with your wife. Eugene tossed a photograph that clearly showed Springfield's wife cheating with Gresham in the bed. The detective considered his exclusive one. Springfield stared at the photo, turned green, and vomited all over Eugene's living room carpet. He sank to the floor in a daze. The two uniformed policemen didn't know what to do and just stood there with their mouths open in shock. By the way, where is my loving wife? Springfield didn't react. One of the policemen spoke. She's in our patrol car waiting for it to be safe to pick up some of her things. She plans to live at her parents' house for a while. Maybe it would be better if we just took her there now. Eugene nodded. This is definitely a good idea. Why don't you help the detective to his feet and lead him outside? Don't bother. I'll clean up the mess. And he dismissed them with a wave of his hand. They helped the semi-comatose Springfield to his feet and out the door. Medford closed behind them. Phew. I guess getting that fine was lucky for me after all. He began looking for some rags, whistling under his breath. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one. About listening to